In today's video, we're going to be breaking down multiple severe weather events across the Deep South and Dixie Alley area. Not one, not two, not even three, but potentially four storm systems are going to move through this area that all bring the potential for severe weather. So yes, it is going to be extremely active in this area for at least a period of time. So we're going to break that down today, among other things like the temperature pattern, total snowfall, which believe it or not is still there. And then overall, the total precipitation around the nation, among other storms. So let's just dive into things and take a look at later on this evening. And we actually do see a pretty sporadic area in the east of thunderstorm activity. This is going to go for the Midwest, Ohio Valley, Deep South, up and down the East Coast here. So a lot of your Eastern states here dealing with potential thunderstorms and showers later on today for the day on Tuesday, May 14th. As we take a look here at the Rockies and the rest of the plains here, we see Montana, Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, uh, and Colorado as well. I got those backwards as well as some of the plain states here. We are seeing some showers and even snowfall showers there in the higher elevation regions. Let's just keep going though. I want to take us towards Wednesday on the 15th here and we do see continued thunderstorm and showery activity taking place here across a lot of the Ohio Valley uh, southeast and northeast and mid-Atlantic here once again. Also, these showers continue for the central regions of the United States, but we do see a little bit of an elevated area here across the northern plains and upper Midwest. So that's going to be an area that we are watching. Let's keep going towards Thursday here on May 16th. And what we see is the central region of the United States is starting to pick up on a lot of activity here, especially New Mexico uh, into Texas here. Don't know why my pen just got so small. You can't even see it. There you go. So as we take a look at New Mexico and Texas, pretty sporadic with these thunderstorms, but they are around uh, up and down these areas. East Coast still dealing with some rainfall as a result of this offshore low. Let's keep going. I want to take us overnight because look at this. As we take a look at Thursday into Friday, that's 16th into 17th, we do have a pretty elevated chance of some overnight severe weather from eastern Texas into Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi here. So we're going to be watching this area very, very closely as this could be one of our bigger severe weather threats. And let's see what happens for the day on Friday. Uh, it looks a little bit less elevated because the low is so far south. Again, we always watch for areas underneath the low. Uh, if the low was up here, I would say that we'd be looking at a much more intense area of severe weather. But with the low all the way down here, uh, we might have a chance here for this thin area. Uh, but I think that this is overall a hindrance of uh, potential severe weather overall, that low being so far south. Not to say that there won't be any, as I think this whole area in here could feature some thunderstorms for the day on Friday the 17th. However, uh, I just think that this, you know, could be more elevated. I don't know how that just happened again. I don't know how I'm doing that. But anyway, let's keep going towards Saturday here on the 18th. And up and down this East Coast area, we do have thunderstorms uh, and showers ongoing, especially the Southeast there. But even up into the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, we do see these thunderstorms present for Saturday on the 18th. And throughout the West and Central states, we're looking mostly towards the Canadian border uh, for those potential thunderstorms and showers, mostly showers, I'd say. Sunday on the 19th, we still see some showers and thunderstorms along this southeast area, getting a lot quieter throughout the nation. Maybe some isolated or scattered thunderstorms from the Rockies through the northern plains and into the Great Lakes. However, uh, just a little bit less intense here, I would say, overall. By Monday on the 20th, again, same story, nothing too organized. We do see the Rockies into the northern plains seeing some activity, Midwest into the Great Lakes as well. And then also for the southeast here, we see thunderstorms and showers present for Monday on the 20th. Tuesday on the 21st, it finally looks like we're getting going. We have a 997 in between Oklahoma and Kansas. A lot of warm front type precipitation to the north of it, nothing to the south of it yet. So let's take a look at Wednesday. And yeah, it really doesn't want to get that cold front going. But I would say with how strong this low is, 989 potentially. There could be severe weather in this regardless, so keep that in mind that heavy precipitation could be associated with a stronger low such as this one. And it even drops down to a 984 here over Iowa. I would say there's definitely the potential for severe weather within this system being that strong this late into spring says a lot. Uh, and as we move towards Thursday, this is racing, but it makes its way into eastern Canada. And we do have thunderstorms present for eastern Canada and the northeast of the United States here, as well as some scattered about thunderstorms throughout the plains and some of the southern Midwest, I guess is what I would call it there on Thursday, the 23rd. Now, 
Let's go ahead and move into this extended range outlook from the European models AI model here that we've been taking a look at a lot. So here's storm number one. I mentioned there could be up to four storms in this deeper south area. So storm number one is ongoing. Uh, we see that one move away. But then we get storm number two here again. This is when we're watching for severe weather in this area overnight Thursday into Friday. It does expand uh, eastward over time. So that's storm number two. Storm number three dips into this area around Wednesday on the 22nd. We can see, again, pretty heavy uh, thunderstorms happening here across the deeper south there. And then storm number four potentially taking place here, uh, dipping into the area around Sunday the 26th. So definitely multiple opportunities for severe weather in this Dixie Alley area, as we've been calling for for over a week now. It does seem like after this point, I mean, keep in mind it is 360 hours out, so take it with a grain of salt, but the activity does kind of return to the north here uh, after that fourth system, I will say. Uh, although I'm really taking this one with a grain of salt because it's so far out and it is a pretty big temp uh, pretty big pattern flip, I would say, overall. Total precipitation, uh, no surprise, and it's been this way for multiple days, but east of the Rockies overall is where we're seeing the average to above average precipitation. Uh, here and then it's very very quiet along the west so that is the look here and this is very summer like so expect to see more of this over the coming weeks and months of course total snowfall don't expect to see much of this over the coming weeks and months we do still have uh, inches to perhaps a foot here expected for some of the northern cascades into the rock rockies but this is very quickly actually receding now uh, day by day looking a lot less winter like so Definitely, we're seeing this slow down quickly. Here is the temperature pattern. We do see a cool down is present in the east, but we start to warm up finally by Saturday, Sunday time frame uh, in the east. And it's all due in part to this cool down that happens out west. So this really causes your jet stream to do this. So we see the warmth prevailing mostly for the central and eastern states with that cold dip out west. And that, again, starts around Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, 18th, 19th time frame, and really wants to stick around for a while. Um, and finally, we see a cool down perhaps around Sunday, Monday, the 26th, 27th time frame, although that's over 240 hours out. So definitely take that with a grain of salt. But it does appear like we still have a cold air mass out west and we're going to see this warm up really regain its uh, strength here over the east. So I would expect overall from the midpoint of May to the end, we're going to end it with a warmer central and eastern states overall. Uh, and colder out west but there is a lot that needs to happen and a lot that needs to uh, verify for that to occur but that is the current look right now to me uh, the storm prediction center outlooks let's go through day one and we do have two general thunderstorm risk areas here in the lighter greens again i'm kind of like a broken record saying this every day but this is where we expect general thunderstorms but severe weather is always possible and these things are very very hard to predict so please continue to heed every watch warning and advisory still we do expect thunderstorms in these areas, not currently expecting severe weather, however. Uh, we do have four marginal risk areas. That's going to be your level one severe weather risk. We have one here for the Plains and Rockies, one here for Texas, one for the Southeast, and then one for New England. Very, very odd, but that is where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. And then we have a two yellow areas here that's going to be your slight or level two uh, risk for severe weather, and that's where we expect scattered severe, severe weather reports to come in. Day two here, which will be for tomorrow on Wednesday, May 15th, we have three general thunderstorm risk areas, one for the Sierra Nevada, one for the Rockies and Plains, and then one for the Southeast again. Again, general thunderstorms in those areas. And then three level one marginal risk areas here, one for the Plains, one for the Carolinas, and then one for Florida. Uh, and this is going to be isolated severe weather expected in these areas. Day three, we see two general thunderstorm risk areas in the lighter greens two marginal risks here in the darker greens, and then one slight risk area here for Texas. And then for day four, we do have an extended day outlook where they do expect at least a slight risk here for Louisiana and Mississippi. Could go even higher though, because they don't always do these, you know, these extended day outlooks uh, signify that they definitely see a pretty high chance of severe weather in the longer range. This will be for Friday on the 17th. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.